What a wonderful game. To all of you out there that want to learn how to shoot from 100s to 90s, from 90s to 80s, from 80s to 70s, those that want to make a living out of golf, I got a lot of information coming for you on YouTube, on my channel, and in Google. Listen, I've been there where you are right now. I've been in the hundreds. I needed to learn how to shoot in the 90s. And I needed to learn how to shoot in the 80s. And then how to break 80. And it was not easy. And then how to break 70. And then I wanted to make a living out of golf against the best all over the world. And that was a, even tougher than I ever thought. So I want to give you some information so you can have an enjoyment in the game and be able to go from one level to the other one without getting the game complicated. And your mind complicated a thought. Simple. First part of the swing is the grip. Interlocking. Addy Bardon in 1938-9 changed his finger to this position. They call it overlapping. And the 10 finger grip. First part of the swing. Great golfers like Sam Snead, Byron Nelson, and Hogan say every good golf show starts with a good grip. My name is Rudy Martinez Rodriguez, master teaching golf profession. A member of the Chichi Rodriguez family of golf. Yes, you heard it right. My uncle is Chichi Rodriguez. Yes, I learned a lot through him, and as a matter of fact, I traveled with him on tour when I was a kid. I had incredible exposures to the best both strikers in the world and the best instructors too, which I consider one of them is my other uncle, Jesus, one of the best swings I've ever seen. But I want to get all that information that I had from my upbringing, upbringing in the sport of golf, excuse my French, upbringing, upbringing in the game of golf, excuse my French, and the experiences that I had going from one level to another one, plus trying to make a living out of golf all over the world against the best. And that's when you really know what golf is all about. But nevertheless, the same pattern that you're gonna use from 100s to 90s, 90s to 80s, 80s to 70s, is the same pattern that you are still gonna use when you make a living, when you're trying to make a living out of golf. So let's go to the first part. Grip. Okay. Let's take this last three fingers of the left hand. Let's put it underneath the club. And let's take the bulge of this palm of the left hand and put it on top. And extend this finger on the shaft. And we take this little finger here. We put it on top of this one. And we take the palm of the hand over here and we put it on top of this finger. Put these two fingers here to the side. Never inside here, these two lines, in the middle lines, okay? There you go, palm of the hand on top, and then this one arches around a little bit, this one goes to the left side of it. And in the old days, they used to say that this is supposed to point to the right, and this one here is supposed to point to the left. However, the important thing is you're able to feel that big form there, once you position the left arm, be able to take the right hand and put it over this finger to be able to get that feeling there. And that's called trigger finger. It has a lot to do with the way you hold on to the club on the top. And that's the grip. That's simple. It will be your decision if you would like to have overlapping, overlapping, interlocking, or 10 finger grip. That's a personal decision. However, once we got the grip, I prefer the overlapping. Let's talk about the second part that goes together with the grip stance, posture, and alignment. I got an exercise for that, and it simplifies everything. Just lower the club to the ground normally. Open your stance laterally, shoulder width. Left side first to the left shoulder, right side second to the right shoulder. Get your abdominals in, and that puts you in a sitting position. Give the proper separation of hands, arms, and wrists from the body. Automatically aligns your stand, your knees, your hips, and your shoulders to the intended target, and it gives you the proper posture. The spinal cord is not going to be too high, and it's either going to be too low. So the separation from here to here and the alignment from here to here to here will be consistent just with one single exercise. So the first part is select the grip. 
I recommend the overlapping because that's what I like. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to play overlap. Lower the club face normally to the ground. Allow it just to fall down. Open your stance laterally, shoulder width, left side first, then the right side. Always the left side first, then the right side. Take your abdominals in and get relaxed in a sitting position. That takes care of grip, stance, posture, and alignment. We got the first part of the swing. Now let's go to the second part of the swing, how we take the club back. Okay, so we get grip, stance, posture, and alignment. Now, we're going to take this knee, this hip, and this shoulder, and we're going to coil back while we take the club. We're going to coil back while the club follows that coil and the weight transfers from the left side to the right side to whatever position your levels of flexibility and physical condition will allow, will allow you to get at the top of the back. When I was a little bit younger, I used to be all the way over here. You know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, so I stay in this position. There's the guys on tour that takes it over here, there's guys on tour that go from here. Everybody got a different position at the top. The important thing about the back swing is that you allow the weight distribution from the left foot to come to the right foot while the coil mass of your body, your body mass coils to take the club back. So that would be the back swing. Okay? The most important part, now that we got grip, stance, posture, and alignment, and we got shoulder turn, hip turn to take the club back. It's what we're going to do coming back. That's the common denominator. That's what they call the secret of golf or whatever they want to call it. These days they got so many names for it, but really, by mechanical research, and Hoga said, say it back in 1958 in his book, Five Mother Fundamentals of Golf, hips is the first movement of the downswing. Golf is played from top to bottom, say Sam's knee, hips, it's the first movement of the downswing to bring the club down, never the hands. If you use the hands, you're going to fish, cast, hit over the top, or leak energy too soon. The result of that is you're going to cross the swing path, you're going to slice it, you're going to hook it, you're going to hit it fat, you're going to hit it thin. One day your timing is great and you go, oh, I feel so great, I shoot 82. And the next day you shoot 95 and you got to call your fellow PEA professional and say, I need a lesson. Just because you haven't given yourself enough time to secure the field of connection of the motor skill, which is opposite to logic, then when you have a bat on top of the backswing in your shoulder turn, which is the second part of the swing, a hip turn, going back to take the club back, first movement of the downswing is going to be here. Knees, feet, legs, and hips. Watch this. Watch, watch how they move forward. And look what happens to the club. I'm not moving the club, it's just falling into a slot by itself. See that? Now, while this is happening, this is staying behind, so it's creating tremendous amount of energy that is loading behind because you're retaining the angle. You lag in the club, you are delaying the hit. Some great ball strike, as a matter of fact, the people that hit it real far. They delay it or lag it so much that when they're pulling through, their hands are still cocked and the shaft is facing all the way to the top. Those are the real long hitters. They want to be able to get into that position. And you can see it, that position in all National Long Drive Championship and some young kids now in the PEA Tour. Now, remember, you have grip, stance, posture, alignment. You do shoulder turn and hip turn. The first movement of the downswing, which is a common denominator for anybody that makes a living out of golf. And anybody that wants to go from 100s to 90s, 90s to 80s, 80s to 70s, from 70s to become a scratch golfer or to make a living out of golf, is that the lower part of the body is the one that controls how the club face returns back at impact and for impact to your intended target. So the game of golf then is opposite to logic, it's play from the bottom up. So be intelligent enough to be stupid to play with golf because it's all against logic. Logic is going to tell you, I took the club up, I'm going to hit down into it. 